Hey, what's up, Soldier Talk Nation? On this week's episode of Soldier Talk, we'll be covering the 2019 Soldier Talk Awards. Alright, so a couple of things before we begin. Uh, Doug is in Korea, so I'm doing the announcements for today. I know, right? Kind of crazy, kind of wild. <laughs> Uh, oh, this episode was actually recorded a call, like a while ago, uh, December 9th, 2019. So this means that while we were doing this episode, a lot of the December releases we weren't able to kind of take into account. This includes the, you know, recent Peggy and stuff, the CO releases, and the Red Velvet comeback that came out a day or two ago. So just keep that in mind while you're listening. Uh, second of all, just keep in mind that this award episode show is just our opinions if you have any other opinions feel free to leave them down in the comments below on youtube or on our discord server and lastly this is kind of an exciting one i had the chance to guest appear on believe in k-pop with emily hato one more time last friday the episode dropped um peter from k-pop cast was there emmy from day about k-pop and sprinkle podcast was there and of course your boy warren from soldier talk was there repping soldier talk it was it was honestly a really cool time really really uh, an honor to be there and it was kind of like hanging out with some cele- celebrities for me so yo y'all gotta check that out it was a dope time shout outs to emily for having me again but anyways i'm gonna stop rambling because we gotta get into the episode so what does what does doug do oh oh, oh he, he okay so prepare your body, pull out your trophies, cause it's time for Soldier Talk Awards 2019! Warren, hit me with the, the intros already playing. Oh well. Hey, what's up everyone? This is Soji Talk, your weekly shot at K-pop. Today you are joining us for a super special episode 66 and the 2019 Soji Talk K-pop Awards. Ooh, Ooh. man. Ooh. I'm Doug, funny. and joining me today, we got Warren. Hey, what's up, everybody? And Anita. Hello. And as a quick reminder, leave us feedback, questions, or hot take at sojutalkpodcast at gmail.com. Subscribe to the Soju Talk YouTube channel. Join the Soju Talk Discord and be a part of the Soju Talk Nation. Links down below. We are pre-recording this episode, um, to be honest. Uh, but it should be released on December 25th, Christmas Day. So Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas! Yay. If you celebrate, oh, happy oh, holidays. Happy holidays if you're not celebrating Christmas. Next week on New Year's Day, January 1st, be on the lookout for our 2019 K-pop year in review and predictions for 2020 video. That should be pretty cool. Um, We're recording both of those ahead of time because I'm going to be on vacation. And plus, we kind of need a break on the holidays as well. So we hope Mm -hmm. you guys understand. But as a quick preview of the awards today, we will be awarding the following. Rookie of the Year, Male and Female. Best Solo Artist, Male and Female. Underrated Song of the Year. Boy Group Excellency and Girl Group Excellency. And for our four day songs, we're going with Boy Group of the Year, Girl Group of the Year, Song of the Year, and Artist of the Year. Please keep in mind that at the end of the day, these are just our opinions. You are open and even encouraged to disagree and let us know what you think. We are not music critics nor experts, so let that be known. <laughs> Feel free to like while like write down a comment on like on a memo app or something while you're listening and then share them with us about who you think should deserve these awards that might be kind of fun right you know interactive we also asked the opinion of the soju talk nation on discord about Mm -hmm. our nominations and we let them and we not let them we had them pick winners which will serve as tiebreakers if we ever get stuck in our discussion so shout out to them it's been a real help for us but now Mm -hmm. it is time to give out some awards let's get it we're starting with rookie of the year male Oh, so man. our nominees oh, are boy. we're only doing um groups here not solo artists the nominees are in alphabetical order ab6 80s cix one us txt and x1 oh boy stacked, stacked. <laughs> this is the only one where we're like all of us are completely disagreeing yeah. with each other. yeah <laughs> okay so the group that i want to award this award to is txt yeah. mm. Okay. I know people okay. sometimes see them as the little bros of BTS, which is true because they're both under Big Hit Entertainment. But with their two songs this year, two A tracks, Crown, Nine and Three Quarters Runaway, I think I want to give it them the Rookie of the Year award. Now, I understand that other groups had great years. I'm talking like ATs, Tremendous, Say My Name, Illusion, Wave, Wonderland. Mm-hmm. AB6 was good, Breathe, but everyone was good in this list. This is the most stacked like <laughs> lineup we have going on. 
CIX Movie Star Numb. I thought that was pretty good. X1 with their one song Flash sold a ridiculous amount of albums, 630,000 to be exact. You know, mm-hmm. One Us, Valkyrie, Twilight Lit. It, it was, this is the honestly the hardest category I think to give out. But I want to give it to TXT. Yes. What about you guys? Well. <laughs> <laughs> well. Well. Um, okay, I'll, I'll present my argument because I decided to give this, or I think this should be given to 80s. Here's my reasoning. Um, I think they're in this group, right? This Rookie of the Year group nominations. Um, is It's all packed with members or people that have had recognition before the de- the debut of their group, right? So they had a lot of members that were either in Variety, like Produce 101, or um, I think, or, or they've been exposed because of their companies, right? Like mm-hmm, their companies mm-hmm. are from the big three. So I feel like ATs is definitely an underdog here, as long with Wanus. Us. Um, Although One Us does have members that participated in Produce 101. Gunny. So they, yeah, they had some advantage there. So I feel like if I had to give it to someone that really, really had to like start from the bottom, KQ Entertainment, not a super huge company. They're the only male group in their company. Uh, I don't know. I feel like they really deserve it. They, they did a ton. Four, no, more than four singles, but... Well, for this year, yeah, 2019, for singles. And they were all really, really great. They did a, a expedition tour, right? A mm-hmm. Europe and U.S. tour. I, I've seen fan camps. It was it was packed. I've seen AT's live at KCON. They were exactly. lit. They were lit. <laughs> so I feel like it definitely, definitely has a ton of potential. And I can't wait to see them do more things in 2020 world tour 2020 uh, so i definitely feel like they definitely did a ton in 2019 that is setting them up for great things in 2020 and i want to recognize them for that okay what about you warren well anita mentioned one underdog she framed that like at was the only underdog i disagree i think cix is the other underdog here why I very much deserve the rookie of the year male Award as well. You know why? why? Okay, first of all, Pei Young is from 101. I, I recognize that. Of course. That. Of course. I cannot forget that. However, and they are also. Wait, are XYG. They... XYG they were... trainee. They have an XYG yes. trainee as well. XYG trainee? What? They had a trainee who was in YG who was famous <laughs> for being in YG. That's what she said. Two saying. of them. Two of them. Yeah. Well, okay. Besides those, <laughs> <laughs> besides those two faucets. C- CIX is the only boy group in C9 as well. They Yes, that's true. For me personally, they came out of nowhere and they are very musically and performance wise very complete. They don't I mm. everyone says they don't feel like a rookie. They f- I feel like they've already been here because I watched their debut, I watched their second comeback. And what is my impression of them? My gosh, everything is very on point and very <laughs> mature with these people. Mm-hmm. And here's what I really, what I was really, really impressed by: their musical feat. I want to even say is very in, one is incredible. It's, uh-huh. They put out, publish out, they push out music that is that feels very complete. In yes. terms of what they do, and, and and even even though they do follow the general trend that K-pop does follow in, mm-hmm. they do stand out very much in that they have a unique twist. They are very strong vocalists. They are very strong rappers. I'm not even gonna go into that. CIX, yes, I do think they are very eligible for Rookie of the Year and qualify. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. They very yeah, yes, they very much qualify. And they deserve it as well. But although, I do see the point. <laughs> okay. <laughs> to be honest with you guys. <laughs> I honestly think that mm-hmm. this award and most award shows comes down to 80s if you include them because they did debut in late 2018. That's something you got to mm-hmm. remember. Right. Yes. It really comes down to, I think, 80s, TXT, and X1. I think those are the, the three 
primary can now x1 because of their issues i think if x1 somehow was able to release a second song they probably would win this because mm. of the overwhelming popular if the produce scandal didn't happen and they just released two songs they probably would win this but because they released one song i want to give this out to a group who's released more than one that's that's my overall stance mm-hmm. on that mm. i personally come down to 80s and txt i think they are the two most deserving groups out of them uh, I see you completely butchered my argument there for my passion with <laughs> Di. I know I love I love me some Beijing Young. I love me some Beijing Young. I love all Young. Of these people. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I'm just joking. Here's the thing. When we talked about Rookie of the Year a couple weeks back, and or from the publishing standpoint a couple months back, Rookie of the Year for me is people who show the most potential. You you think Cix has a higher higher ceiling than ATs or TXT? I was about to say the complete opposite and saying that TXT has very much potential. Okay. Uh, and I think they deserve Rookie of the Year as well. TXT? Yes, even though I've made an argument for CIX. Okay, oh, I was about to say if you <laughs> <laughs> like I love CIX, but like it's good. they they got to they they need more momentum in order to get a higher ceiling than I think TXT or ATs at this point. One year in. Okay, so it seems like we're down to TXT at ATs, right? I I Yes. Would you will you concede CIX, sir? I guess. Okay. <laughs> but but if I had to make a choice between ATs and TXT, mm. I would go with TXT. I would go with Tomorrow Bite Together. I have made some spicy takes regarding <laughs> AT songs in the past. Feel free to look them up. I stand by my arguments. Okay, so <laughs> It comes down to if I if I don't want to switch my argument from TXT or ATs, TXT wins it, right? If I don't want to flop, because Discord, yeah. If we okay, let's so Soji talk Discord, pick TXT as well, and I guess because Warren, I'm leaning TXT, and Warren has now leaned to TXT over ATs, and Soji talk Discord has picked TXT. I'm sorry, Anita, Um, but it seems like the Soju. (laughs) <laughs> this year <laughs> is going to TXT for Rookie of the Year <laughs> Male. All right, so congratulations to TXT. Let me highlight this in our script real quick. So I will congratulations. Remember this. Yay. Together. Let's TXT. now move on to Rookie of the Year Female. So these are female groups. The nominees we only have five are Bandit, Cherry Bullet, Everglow, Itzy, Rocky Punch. I feel that it is very difficult <laughs> to argue that Itzy does not win this award. Yeah. But Rocket Punch! No, Itzy deserves it. Let's be real. <laughs> what am I saying? I think that Cherry Bullet had a solid year. Bandit's interesting for next year. I think second place in this category has to be Everglow with Bomba yeah, Chocolate yeah, Adios yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. But I think overwhelmingly, Itzy with Dala Dala and Icy. They're the only one on this list that sold over 100,000 albums. 21 music show wins this year, which is a ridiculous number. I think that mm-hmm. puts them tied with BTS. If I remember correctly, I'm not 100% oh, sure. But yeah, they all, BTS also had 21. So they are tied with BTS for most this year. Wow. Wow. I know Ro- Warren loves Rocket Punch, but I think 100% Rookie of the Year female group has to go to ITZY. Does anyone disagree with that? No. Here, here's what I'll say about it. See, they've successfully created their own area within the industry within like two comebacks. That's yes. Completely difficult to do. It's very yeah. difficult yeah. to do. So I'm just really excited for next year with them. But the soju, which I'm not sure how many of them can drink <laughs> this year, <laughs> goes to Itzy. Rookie of the Year Yay. Soju goes to Itzy. Come back. Cheers. Congrats. Okay. Uh, now let us move on to Best Solo Artist Male. So the nominees are Baekhyun, Chen, J-Hope, Kang Daniel, Taemin, and Zico. <sighs> this is tough. Yeah, cool. Also stacked. Also, yeah, cool. also absolutely stacked. You know, for me, I'm, the, I'm down to four artists. <laughs> Wait, you only really wrote down one on the script. Okay, the, the, the artist I wrote was Kang Daniel because I thought What You Up To was good. He sold like over 500,000 albums with just that song. Oh, true, true. And then he came out with Touching last week for us. Might be about a month when you're listening to this. 
I'm assuming this is selling very well as well. Yeah, okay. That made sense, I guess. But the other people I was debating, <laughs> I thought Baekhyun had a great song, You and Village. I think that's one of the best songs of the year. Yeah. J-Hope's Chicken Noodle Soup. I thought that was good, but I think that's more targeted towards the Western audience. But shout out to him for his achievements. Mm-hmm. The other people I think you could strongly argue for is Taemin with Want and Famous and Zico with Daredevil Extreme Human Balloon left behind all within like wow. a month and a half. But for me, I think Kang Daniel should win it. What about you guys? I've been saying one name over and over again since we got into this topic, and it's Ziako of KOZ. KOZ? Fancy. <laughs> <laughs> here's, here's the thing this, look at this list. Baekhyun, Chen, J-Hope, Kang Daniel, Taemin, Ziako. They are very well-established male performers, male performers who are very good at what they do. It's kind of impossible to say who is better or did more than the other. But there's things Zico did that the other people didn't do. He produced his own solo album, mm-hmm. full length. It was not only just an album, it was actually a very well-made album, it was it, it got praises from casual fans, critics, everybody. There was Yum Dan Jack UI in it for some reason. Yeah. And the guy made his own company. He didn't yep, like yep. sign with the one man company. He is the CEO of his own company. And then he went on to like he did like radios on like by himself and like personally. He's doing more than what we expect from an artist, for, from an idol. He does, he's starting to do, he's starting to reach an artist level category. Mm. And personally, for me, when someone does that from the world of K pop, that is, that has a special place in my heart. So, <laughs> shout out to Ziako from Fancy and KOZ. Before, KOZ. before I give my rebuttal, Anita, you can go with your nominees. Or your winner for All this right. category. Mm. Well, for me, it was between two people. One I'm very biased, and the other one I just feel like they did a lot. Like the efforts they did to produce like their music and establish a whole new company. I'm talking about Zico. Um, really impressive, and I feel like it should be recognized. Um, so my other nominee that I was debating on was Taemin, and. I think I'm very biased because I, I I'm a fan of Shiny. But I feel like Taemin has I don't know, I just feel like he has just established himself as a, as a male solo artist in a category of its own. Like I feel like his, his style, his genre is so identifiable to him and only him. Correct. That I feel like it's I don't know, I feel like I can't imagine someone trying to how can I say like I feel like there will never be another Taemin if that makes sense Mm -hmm. so because of that I want to give it to him Um, I will admit that I feel like for this year I don't know how successful it might have been with other releases solo releases but I definitely feel like it's still notable enough even like 10 plus years into his career like I feel like that's recognizable as well. That's the problem. He's he's a very irreplaceable person in the industry. Like there's nobody else like him at the moment. Okay. It's you, kind of yes. we're never gonna have him another person like him for a while. So you want some takes? You want some takes? Oh, yes. oh! I remember you, you want to rebut <laughs> against my. Uh, go for it. Number one. Okay. Of course, I respect Zico. He's great. Yeah. I don't know if you would consider him K-pop anymore. That's my first take. Um, these are K-pop yeah. awards. <laughs> I, I consider him more of a rapper, hip-hop artist at this point. I don't think he's producing True. stuff that, like, I know he's formerly an idol. Block B is definitely an idol group. But the, the music he's producing now is not very idly relative to w- what's going on right now. That being said, extremely good year. I know we're praising him because he has his own company, but because he has his own company and he's his own creative director, he does have the benefit of being able to produce as many music videos as he can fund. That's true. Mm-hmm. That's one thing you have to consider because these other people are under constraints for their companies. I know Kang Daniel can, but generally new companies with like idols who aren't super established, you're not going to release five music videos in two months, right? 
yeah. Uh, that being said, I know Zico released all these music videos, right? Mm-hmm. Which one was the one with Jackie Wai and Yamta? Is that Daredevil, right? Daredevil. Daredevil, mm-hmm. for me, was the... And I think Human were the only two I can specifically remember right now as someone who is not a humongous Zico fan. I don't mm-hmm. think that the wider K-pop audience is consuming all of that content. To the like, if you're not really into like Zico or you're not really into Korean hip hop that kind of stuff, I don't think you're consuming all this content as much as the other nominees on this list. I think it's very driven by are you a Zico fan or not, because mm-hmm. I don't see the the wide stream like K pop exposure from his stuff. <laughs> oh man, you bring up a really good argument here. <laughs> We're just oh, dying. Oh man, I'm kind of like. I'm like being sucked into existence here because I don't know how to refute this. That being said, I think Taemin's art is tremendous, but he suffers from the same thing where if you're a Taemin fan, you're consuming this, you love it. But at the same time, we always say Taemin's as much about the performance as he is about the music. Mm-hmm. And and I, I know we're giving out this award for like, technically we're giving this award out for the music, right? That's the argument okay. against... I'm not, I'm not saying Kang Daniel should win this anymore. I will concede that point. I think it comes... I will give you guys that it comes down to Zico and Taemin, I think. Um, for, for reference, would you talk this court chose Taemin? It's a tough thing. Right. You know, I'm fine giving it to Zico as well, honestly, even though I made that counter argument because... That's a good one, though. That's a good That's point. A very good one. Yeah, I think you give it to Zico, but you have to understand, like, I don't know if the wider audience would agree with that... that giving it out to him i'm fine giving it to him though if we want to give it to him it's fine like i'm completely cool with i'm that. okay with him in. i'm still very shriveled up from your argument because that just came out of nowhere like a truck and just hit me like being bro i had been preparing that argument for about a week yeah i've <laughs> been I thinking about that. this he was thinking <laughs> he knew i was gonna make the zico argument he, he knew <laughs> I he, he already knew he knows what i listen to Here's the thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, personally, here's another argument that I that someone could present against Zico. Mm-hmm. There's no choreography, really. Mm-mm. That's true. And that's a big component of K-pop. If if, we were, if we were giving out the, like male hip hop artists of the year, I could give it to him. That, like I'm I, not giving okay. male hip hop artists. Of okay, the year to okay. Zico, though, like, <laughs> no, no, no. But I'm saying like oh, I'm oh. saying like male hip hop artists of the year. At like a K-pop award ceremony, it would go to him. <laughs> mm, in mm, that context, okay. right? I, okay, I guess. That okay. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I mean let, you want to give it to him? Let's give it to him. I'm fine nah, with that. I think I think Taemin deserves this. To be honest, he, he's oh, actually man. Like, All right, Zico's like, I feel bad Zico, for no Zico. Straight up said at one point that like the music he does on his own isn't K-pop. He just straight well. up said that a couple times. So. All right, well, since you said yeah. that, I feel bad, <laughs> but I guess the soju for best solo male artist this year will go to Taemin. Let's go, Taemin. Yay, Shout out to him. Congratulations. Okay, so that is uh, the male Taemin. best solo artist. Now let's move on to best solo artist female. So the nominees are Chunga, Hayes, Hwasa, Ayu, Sunmi, Taeyeon. Oh man. Wow. Okay. This this gets harder and harder. <laughs> I know I'm super biased. I want to give this to Ayu for her songs Love Poem and Blooming. Both of them are two songs that were perfect all kills. I don't think anyone on this list has a perfect all kill this year other than her. That's one point. Mm. Um she broke the record for the highest album sold in the first 24 hours by a female artist. But Taeyeon did achieve that as well before Ayu broke it. I think Hwasa's twit is good, but I want to give it to someone who's released more than one song. I think Sunmi's Noir La La Lay are good songs, but I don't think it's like Gashina level songs. If this was the Gashina year, you got to give it to her. Haze is a lot of volume, but I think she suffers from the same thing that Zico suffers with in a K-pop category. That being said, I think Taeyeon's Four Seasons Voice and Spark were tremendous. But I think that... I like them more than the general public like them, if that makes any sense. Um, mm, I'm okay. really down to Ayu and Chunga. If I if I think about who I think had the more solid songs overall, I think Ayu. But if I think who had the hottest point of the year, you got to give it to Chunga. Mm. Warren, I think you're muted. 
<laughs> oh, sorry, I was coughing earlier. Okay. I mean, I had a really dramatic entrance. Oh, man. <laughs> All right, okay. This is the point where I say the tables have turned, Douglas. <laughs> <laughs> what? That would have been so dramatic if I was a muted. Dang it. Okay. What do you mean? Here's how I feel about Ayu. Is she an idol? Or is she more oh. of an artist? Oh. oh! But the thing is, okay. the thing is, there would be a category for Zico to win. This is the only category Ayu would be up for, other than a day song. This is this is true. But here's here's what I think. <laughs> Same with Zico. Ayu doesn't have like choreo, which I feel like is a big component That's of K-pop. That's fair. That's fair. Even though I'm not like a choreo person, I, I have to recognize that. Personally, um, Ayu is straying farther and farther and farther away from a typical idol every year. I'm not saying that's a bad thing or a good thing, but I kind of recognize her as an artist now. I agree. That, now that she's agree. producing her own music. And even without that argument, Love Poem and Blooming were fantastic songs. Do I think it's the best song that's ever come out of her discography? No, it's not. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. As the IU fan, it's not. <laughs> now, Chung Ha though. Chung -ha. Yes. Oh, buddy. Gotta go. Personally, it's like one of the best songs this year. I was just gonna say, out of all the songs that we've listed on this list next to these are, it's the best song. It's yep. It is. And then snapping was a solid song. So, snapping was up. solid. She had a bunch of collabs that were amazing. Rich Brian as a meme. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> with, with Rich Brian and like Mommy Stone and like mm -hmm. stuff like that. In that aspect, I kind of have to recognize her. Queen Chunga, Miss Soju over here. Oh, what about you, Anita, before we give her the soju, I guess? <laughs> <laughs> well, to be honest, I also have Chunga down as a nominee because there I do go. feel there like I was a little bit torn because I wanted to. I also have her down for Song of the Year just because Gotta Go was so iconic. Yes. But um, I don't know. I feel like if we're, if we're ticking off Fox's categories, I feel like she's got everything. Dancing, singing variety like everything so I, I as much as i love all of the other artists because i also had haze down but mm -hmm. the argument also falls like she doesn't really have choreo like not i wouldn't i don't even know if it's truly considered k-pop as well she indie yeah she but i mean i i loved her album i loved everything that she produced this year so i wanted to shout her out but i feel like tonga is the whole package and especially for this year she really proved it. Okay, so it seems like we're kind of in agreement. Soju Talk, Nate, uh, Soju Talk Discord also chose Chunga. So oh! <laughs> by a wide margin, the best solo artist female Soju goes to Chunga. So congratulations to congratulations. Chunga. Congratulations. Cool. That, that all was good. Okay, next one we're going to be awarding for underrated sleeper song of the year this is going to be awarded individually we're not just going to choose one song so we're each going to give out a shot for her underrated <laughs> sleeper song of the year my shot is going to luan with her song beep beep if you're with the no you love this song like, like if you know this song generally you like this song if you don't know this song why aren't you listening to this song so luan is a um is a female solo artist she's very young i think she's like 17 years old she's from japan she released this song, Beep Beep. It is one of the best songs of the year. Did not get much hype, though. Please go listen to it. But Luan, I know you cannot drink your shot, but you are getting a shot <laughs> <laughs> from your boy, Doug. All right, how about you, Warren? Well, I guess I have another Japanese girl on this list because yeah, this girl is like, she, she embodies city pop. Yep, she does. Yep. yep. Um, I got it. I got to give my award to Neon by Yukika. My God, my my gosh. Yeah. Cherry Jubilee, 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 Chuago is Jubilee. also a very solid song, but Neon is like, it's very stereotypical of a, a, a city pop song, but it pushes those to the limits to the point where it just fully embodies everything modern about 80s Japanese pop yeah. music. And it's it's so far it's been a great ride. 
I don't know what to say more. It's it's a wonderful song. Y'all should go check it out if you haven't yet. I wanted to give this award to R and B or hip hop artists, and Doug was like, "No, no, 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 bro, you cannot do that." <laughs> no, I was not like, "No, no, no, no." You were like, "No, no, 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 no." <laughs> we both were like, "No, no, 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 no." But Anita, um, who is getting your shot for underrated sleeper song of the year? Okay, so this group, I feel like they did not get nominated for rookie group of the year but they were <laughs> definitely on my list because i like everything they've put out i love their retro sound i'm talking about very very and i'm shouting out ring 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 their debut song that came out back in january i think yes january yes. of this year and i've been listening to that song constantly since it came out and i don't know i feel like this this particularly their debut song was so so fresh, so youthful, so refreshing, and I, I'm so sad that not a lot of people know about them and of this song in particular. Um, so I want people to listen to it, check them out. They're from Jellyfish Entertainment. They're really great vocalists and dancers. Uh, I hope they get more exposure next year because they're really talented. Um, and yes. Ring, okay. ring, ring. So our underrated sleeper songs of the year. So the shots go to Luan's Beep Beep, Very Very's Ring Ring Ring, and Yukika's Neon. Let's move on to one of the biggest awards before the day songs, Boy oh Group boy. Excellency. So oh these boy. will be uh. awarded to the three groups who had the best 2019. Winners from this group, the three winners will be candidates for group and artist of the year day songs. So these are big implications here. Oh boy. We picked 10 candidates. It took a lot of effort. We, I streamed and asked the, the nation what they thought as well. But the 10 artists we decided on were ATs, BTS, Day6, GOT7, Monster X, NCT127, New West, 17, Stray Kids, and TXT. Jesus. <laughs> okay. I think right off the top, two groups need to win this award. BTS... And 17. I understand mm. BTS only yeah. released one song, but I think Boy With Love is also a contender for Song of the Year. Even though they released one song, they are the only group on this list that you can truly say are trailblazing a path for K-pop internationally right now. Yes. They are holding up the banner of K-pop, breaking all new records with their stadium tour. Just on that achievement alone, I think you have to recognize them as one of the top three groups of this year. Mm-hmm. Second, I want to give it to Seventeen. I think this was Seventeen's breakout year. They released Home, Hit, and Fear. They sold 1.4 million albums this year, which is Amazing. second place to BTS. Out of all other K-pop acts, they are second place. This has been by far their best year, and they are now truly top tier. I would even say right now, they are the number two boy group in all of K-pop. You know, I agree. My third group, this is the one that I struggled with the most. My The four groups I was down to were Stray Kids, NCT 127, TXT, and ATs. Mm-hmm. Those are the three mm-hmm. groups. ATs, I think that they still need a little bit more time to win this award. They came, Say My Name, Illusion, Wave, Wonderland this year. I thought Wave was one of the best songs. Hakuna Matataya, everyone, oh you know? <laughs> that was a dead meme. They did tremendously well. I put them at about the same level as TXT right now. I think it's a very strong race, as you guys saw with our uh, Rookie of the Year male group. I think they're one step below the the next two groups, NCT 127, and for me, Stray Kids. NCT 127, they had Wakey Wakey, Highway to Heaven, Superhuman, three fantastic songs. Mm -hmm. But for me, I want to give this award to Stray Kids this year. Ooh. Stray Kids mm-hmm. released Mirror, Side Effects, Double Knot, and of the day of this recording, Levanter. They sold 409,000 albums going into November, so that's through October, which is more than NCT 127. Mm-hmm. I know they got yeah. one music show win, but I think with the Levanter drop of this, that album that came out, I think, it, I think you got to give it to them over NCT 127. It's ironic, because yeah. Anita and Warren... Both chose NCT 127. But you could win me over, though, because I'm a little biased with NCT, too. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're the one to back me up. But, but are, are, we, are we in agreement that it's BTS and 17, though? I, yeah, day? I agree I with think that. we all agree on that part. Okay, so yes. g- give, give, give us, um, we'll give the audience and me your argument as to why NCT should win the third spot over Stray Kids. Here's the thing, though. I am already kind of, I really am mixed opinions about NCT 127 as a third person on this list. They had a oh. they, 
here's the thing. Wakey, wakey, highway to heaven, superhuman, wonderful songs. I, I might even include the December songs from last year. Like, regular was, I think, December. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which, depending on which award, would also fall into this year as well. And they they put out a very consistent level of amazing music, wonderful performances, and its music videos are top notch as always. Yes, and it's 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 impossible to kind of ignore that. But at the same time, I recognize that they're not doing well. Hmm. I recognize that the group is in a bit of a low point as somebody would say, because they have trouble with, they had a couple of negative scandals, their sales aren't mm. amazing, there's a lot of unfortunate gossip between fandom members. It's a little complicated situation for them, and they gotta, honestly, SM needs to get their shit together. L let, me, let me pump them up a little, though. <laughs> okay, af yeah. after yes. BTS, NCT127 is the most Western-friendly group on this list. Oh yeah. Yeah. Making them doing the most in the US. Were they the ones who danced with Mickey Mouse last year? Yep, they that did. was them. Yep. That they was sure them. Did. They okay. were at the um Macy's Thanksgiving Day parade. They were. You got to weigh those achievements. Those are crazy things. Well, I know the the Mickey Mouse thing was last year, but still like they in terms of western exposure, they're they're big, clearly. Anita, why why would you want to give this Well, do you agree with me that it comes down to NCT 127 and Stray Kids? I I do my reasoning for NCT was that I feel like it might not reflect itself in like album sales or music show wins, but I definitely feel like NCT 127 is one of the more well-known acts right now, like worldwide. Mm -hmm. um, and especially because they've been doing a lot of tours, like they did the tour in the U.S. Um, that I couldn't go to, but <laughs> they, they've been doing a lot of stuff outside of Korea and... I feel like that also should have some definitely does. Definitely does. Uh, uh, I don't know. I feel like I've, I'm a little biased because I, I really liked their stuff. I really liked the their their repackaged album, Superhuman, was great. Yes, yes. Really, really good. Loved that song. Um, but I do admit, like, I do agree with some things that Warren has mentioned where it, I feel like they could be even better, but things have not lined up quite as I would have expected. The, here's the thing. I, okay. I'm kind of back on the NCT track now again. Here's, okay. here's why I think <laughs> NCT 127 <laughs> deserves the award more than everyone else in this list, except BTS and 17. NCT 127, if, if you look at the stuff they push out, they push boundaries in ways that have not been pushed before in terms of music and production and choreo. They do things that are very unique to them and they have a very mm -hmm. identifiable sound. Again, very unique, mm -hmm. kind of an irreplaceable musical color in the whole industry. And I can't say that about Stray Kids or TXT or ATs at the moment. I kind of see that point, uh, for sure. Maybe in a year or two, when they have a more solid discography and a more solid, consistent comeback in terms of musical style and color and whatnot. Yeah, but at the moment, just looking at the stuff they push out, I don't, regardless of the numbers. So, so you're and, confident that they had a top three 2019 out of all these groups? In terms of musical output, 100%. Okay, so the Soldier Talk Discord surprisingly <laughs> chose 17... 80s txt their runners up were stray kids oh, in day six yeah, yeah, yeah. they did not pick bts which was i thought really interesting because i thought for sure they would be like mm -hmm. chosen everywhere but I, maybe they were just weighing the fact that they only released one song that could mm -hmm. that could be true. it for sure There's but a lot of factors because both of you are strongly feeling nct 127 i will concede stray kids but shout out to them i thought they had a great year so of our course, three yes. winners for boy group excellency and the candidates now for um Group, well, boy group of the year and artist of the year are BTS, NC2127, and 17. Wow, shout out to them. Congratulations, Congratulations. to all the nominees. Oh, the, so the soju goes to them. I messed that up. I was highlighting, but the soju <laughs> goes to them. Um, now let's move on to our final award before we reach our day songs. Can one of you go down to the the day song area and fill that out, the, the three uh, winners for this? Well, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. so Girl Group Excellency is also awarded to the 
three groups who had the best 2019. So the three girl groups with the best 2019. Winners will also be candidates for Girl Group of the Year and Artist of the Year Day songs. The candidates are Blackpink, G Friend, G Idol, Itzy, Eyes One, Oh My Girl, Mamamoo, Red Velvet, Twice, and Cosmic Girls. Also known as Uju Sonyo. I still have not picked my third winner. <laughs> with you bro <laughs> i think let's, 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 i think two of these groups stand sh- head and shoulders above the other eight the two i'm mentioning number one twice you got to give it to them fancy and yes. feel special are two song of the year candidates i think they're the only group that i could confidently say have two song of the year candidates i feel like twice this is a very good year for twice very special year for twice they had a couple low moments they had a couple scandals at the same time they had what is what I might consider the most successful concept change in the history of K-pop? Oof. Drop. I said it. Ooh. Yes. So yeah. I got to give it to Twice. So yeah, I, I need to agree with that too, right? Of course. Overall, they sold the most for girl groups. They're the only group that sold a million. I think they are like, they've doubled every other girl group on this list in terms of album sales. You got to give it to them. Um, You have to. The second group. I'm confident in giving it to, although Anita is not, is I want to give the second award, well, the second one to Itzy, for sure. Mm. I think with their two songs, Dala Dala it, and Icy, they have, as Warren said before, fully established themselves as a top tier act. 21 music show wins. Ridiculous. I don't, I did not expect, well, after seeing how Stray Kids were in their like first year, I did not expect it's to be this popular this soon. I think Stray, Stray Kids has been yeah. a little bit more of a slow, slow build up. Itzy just exploded right off the bat. Now I know people say that they have sound music, but it sells right now. No, noise music. Mm-hmm. Noise music. That's what it is. Um, <laughs> I have four other groups that I'm debating for the fourth spot. Cosmic Girls. I think this is their biggest year to date for sure. La La Love, okay. Boogie Up, As You Wish. I'm not as big of a fan of the first two as I am the last song. Oh My Girl, the fifth season, tremendous song. Bungie, I didn't think was as great, but they had a great performance on Queendom. Mm-hmm. Actually, I have... Oh, no, no. The fourth one, Mamamoo. Oh, you switched oh, it. I'm switching oh, it right oh, now. I had G oh, Idol, oh. but I'm thinking about it. I, it has to be Mamamoo. Uh, Mamamoo. Okay, Go Go Baby, Gleam, Hip. They won Queendom. Yep. They did. Just south they of did. that, right? Like, they defeated a lot of other girl groups on that show. I know that they were the favorites, but you got to give them it. Lastly, Red Velvet. Two songs, Zimzala Beam, Oompa Oompa. Two very polarizing songs, right? Like, True. you either love them or hate them, I think, this year. But their sales do not lie. They had a world tour this year. You got to give them some respect, too. I'm, this, is, this is a very spicy take, but this is my least favorite year of Red Velvet so far in their whole career mm. Simzala Beam was a letdown Oompa Oompa was a letdown and their trilogy is incomplete I am heavily let down if I have to give it to a third group right now Mamamoo, Mamamoo? that's just my, oh, what my gut is telling okay. me but what do you guys think alright well I'm gonna do the good old what I learned in American school way of crossing out the ones I don't want to give it to as, <laughs> as you do that I need to run to the the, the what are you doing? Through real quick. All right. Oh my break. god. All right. All right. Are you taking a break or I'm just going to keep talking? Should I keep talking? He doesn't need to hear this. He knows this already. All right. Here's the thing Blackpink had killed this love. I, I'm not a fan of the song. If you like it, good for you. I'm not. Whatever. Pass on Blackpink. G Friend has Sunrise and Fever. I think they very much had a solid year. Was it their best year in the career? Was it a very breakout year? Mm-hmm. Ah. Mm-hmm. G Idol has Senorita, Uh Oh, and Lion. Very impressive. Um, again, always impressed by Soyeon's art. At the same time, do I still wish, do I still think that they can do more? Yeah. Itzy, I'm not gonna argue against Itzy. Eyes <laughs> um, One had one come back due to unfortunate circumstances. We will see where Eyes One goes. Mm-hmm. Oh my girl. Wonderful song. The fifth season. Not a fan of Bungie. Uh, Mamamoo, I think, is a very strong contender. Although I'm not a big fan of Mamamoo. Oh, so I'll pause on that. Red Velvet, I already said how I feel about Red Velvet. Twice, I already said what, about, what I feel about twice. Cosmic Girls. 
Cosmic Girls. Hear, hear me out. <laughs> hear me out here. <laughs> Y'all already know that uh, Cosmic Girls is up there on my list. But here's the thing. La La Love, Boogie Up, As You Wish were very solid comebacks. They sold very well. They had music show-ins. And here's the thing with Boogie Up, right? Like, Boogie Up. Oh, Doug is back. I didn't, I didn't notice that he was back because I was looking at the back. script. But Boogie Up. <laughs> I like how you say it. Boogie Up. <laughs> Boogie Up. <laughs> Personally... I might even go far to say that it was the girl group summer song of the year. Oh, okay. Between all the summer releases, this had a very good sale. It had good positioning on the charts. Mm -hmm. Boogie Up and Up was, I think, <laughs> was the wonderful song. <laughs> I'm just going to put it out there, even though I might be biased, that I think Cosmic Girl depend really deserves the third spot on the list. So there you have it, folks. Okay. Cosmic Girls. Ujo's one, y'all. Anita, yeah. I see that you have twice like we do. Mm -hmm. I do. Explain your other two choices. That's the, the okay. main thing. So I had a similar reasoning with Doug about Mama Moo because I feel like for this year, even with their solo projects and then their group comebacks and their stuff with Queendom, I just feel like they've just really solidified how strong of a group they are. And of course, they're not from the top, the big three, but I feel like the popularity, like the fandom of Mamamoo is huge, very strong. And I don't know, I just feel like, especially with this, the, 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 the most recent comeback, I feel like Mamamoo is almost like a senior to some people on this list just because they've done so much and they still do so well. So that's that was my reasoning between Mom, Mamamoo. And then my third person, my third group was Red Velvet. Really? Yes, hear me out. Mm -hmm. So for me, I do admit like this, this year, the discography they put out was not my favorite. Like there's, there's been other years where I absolutely loved everything on their album. But I still feel like even on, on and off here, like Red Velvet is still really good. And I say that because, yes, uh, Sims Levy and Oompa Oompa were polarizing, but I feel like they were, maybe it's just me, but I feel like they were referenced in certain ways. Like on a drama, they referenced Oompa Oompa. Uh, like, I don't know, it just feels like that that sense of popularity and importance that you get from being like a top tier Mm -hmm. girl group is it sticks even if what you're putting out is not like it's not like top notch like for them a little top bit notch better. for them right for them yeah like their comparison is with them i think yeah like comparing to their previous stuff but i don't know i i thought yes it was a little bit of an off year but i still feel like it's not it's not it's not terrible by any means yeah, i think I agree they definitely deserve the recognition. I, I disagree, frankly. If, okay. Even if some <laughs> other girl groups dropped Zim Zalibim and Oompa Oompa, I would have disagreed. But before, but before you fully disagree, so I know Anita did not pick Itzy, but myself, Warren, and the Soju Talk Discord has picked Itzy. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say that they win the second award. So okay. we have okay. twice in Itzy, twice Itzy, and we're down to our third one. The third choice for Soju Talk Discord, like Warren, was Uju Sonyo Cosmic Girls. Thank it you. seems like we're down to Mamamoo, Red Velvet. Well, no one has Red Velvet for Anita, so unfortunately, I'm going to eliminate okay. them. So we're down to Mamamoo and Uju Sonyo for the third spot. Oh, man. All right. Give me your power. So just talk to <laughs> I will make the argument for Cosmic Girls. Okay. Here's the thing, though. I did, I don't, I'm not sure if you were there for this when you went because i said this while you were in the bathroom i think <laughs> there is a very good argument from mm -hmm. there's a very good argument go go by bay gleam hip wonderful songs and then hasa had a wonderful solo career we had a solo and, song yep right he even also did a solo thing they were wonderful in queendom all our achievements that cosmic girls didn't really kind of have frankly let's put it this way <laughs> If Mamamoo and Cosmic Girls were both on Queendom, who would have won? Mamamoo. <laughs> 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 
I, I, I think by far this is Uju Sonyo's best year, right? I get that. Yes. Yeah. My argument be to that. be made is for me, only the last song was a like top grade, amazing song. The, uh, the second song was just a s- summer song. I think it was good. I view it like I view AT's Wave. The one of the, the best, I, which I think is the best summer song for guys. Mm. I just think it's a solid summer song. Um, Here's what but, I'll say. But with Mamamoo, Go Go Baby, and Hip were both mega songs. Here's what I'll say regarding Cosmic Girls. I'll, actually, I'll say two things. One year ago, I did not imagine that I would be able to mention Cosmic Girls on this list. For sure. A year oh. ago, I, I did not imagine that. But here we are. Here we are as a possible candidate for this award. But I will concede. Don't concede. Uh, what are you just gonna, <laughs> whatever you concede and said. In the hopes of them winning next year. Because I think ah. they can do even better. They're still on the rise up. I don't think they have peaked yet. I think they're going to keep going up. And they're, uh, next year is going to be the year of <laughs> girls, Wujutonyo, Cosmic Girls. Full 13 with China Line. Okay. Um, I feel kind of bad, don't you, Adina? <laughs> like, <laughs> all right, but uh, don't don't kill us in the comment section. But I guess the winners for it the was hard. the Soju for Girl Group Excellency is going to Twice, Itzy, and Mamamoo. Congratulations to them. Congratulations with a to the shot winners. going to Uju Sonyo if we could do that. Yes. But Warren, I mean, if, I could award, if I could award it to anybody I wanted, I probably would have given it to um, a certain rocket punch. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> y'all know, this y'all know what's up. Page. So, but um, now let's move on to our day songs or big awards. We have a rule here to spread the love. Boy group of the year, girl group of the year, and artist of the year have to be awarded to different artists. So you cannot double up. The only way you could double up in our day songs is if you also win song of the year. So does that make sense to everyone? So it means that if you win boy group of the year, you can't win artist of the year. If you win girl group of the year, you cannot win artist of the year. So it has to be three separate groups, but you can double up if you win song of the year. Where do we want to start with this? Uh, okay. Let's start with boy group of the year. Boy group of the year. My argument is that BTS is the artist of the year. <laughs> that's, that's my first take. <laughs> that, is, that is my first take. They are just so culturally significant. I feel you cannot deny them that. That's true. That leads me to give Boy Group of the Year between 17 and NCT 127. I feel like you got to give it to 17 this year. I get NCT 127's probably bigger on a Western level. Highway to Heaven, Superhuman, great songs. But for me, NC, uh, not NCT, 17 on a domestic front. Home, hit, fear. All bangers. Grade A bangers. Here's what I'll say. I'm going to go back to the etymology and the, and the labels we're giving these. Boy group of the year and artist of the year. To me, BTS is an artist. They've, they've, mm-hmm. they've gotten to that level. They're not just a boy group. They're an artist. Mm-hmm. They, they're something more. They, to me, BTS is just something a little more than just a regular boy group or the boy group of the year or something like that. They, 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 they're, they're, they are irreplaceably one of the most important figures in Korean music history at this yep, point. Yep. So I I would even go to say that they're kind of inappropriate for this award because the word yeah. boy group doesn't fully encompass. So they're the man group. Of the- <laughs> oh <my> God, <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh my never God. Mind. Um, so exclude, excluding that, mm. it's, Thinking about what I define in a boy group, solid comebacks, wonderful comebacks, wonderful music, wonderful choreo. 17. It, I, I kind of have to. Mm. It's, I, I kind of have to. They put out good music, a variety of it as well. Very top of the game in each kind of concept they do. Wonderful music videos, wonderful choreography. I, it's, I Come on. 17 guys <laughs> what uh, anita do you have a rebuttal at all you could even like not like you could agree with us but give us the case for nct 127 here over 17 uh, well the thing is that's the same kind of argument i had with the excellency award because mm-hmm. i don't know i feel like nct 127 
like I mentioned before, has not really shown in the numbers, the album sales, the music show wins. Mm-hmm. Like, up to par, I would say, with Seventeen and BTS. But I definitely feel like their popularity worldwide mm-hmm. is definitely up there because I think they come from the big three and I don't know, they've just been doing a lot of stuff, put a, a lot of effort and um, a lot of activities outside of South Korea, but I don't know. I I, I, I see Seventeen's argument because they've, they've just done a lot. <laughs> I feel like minus BTS, it is the year of Seventeen this mm. year. In terms of boy groups? Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Anita? You go with that? Yes, they deserve it. Okay, so our boy group of the year, Daesung. A big shot of soju and a big bottle of soju <laughs> is going to 17. Congratulations. Ooh, congratulations. They had a fantastic yeah. year. But now, year for let's move on to our girl group of the year. The argument to be made is do you do you verse twice do you do BTS versus twice for artist of the year, right? That's the big argument oh. to be made. Bef- oh man. Before oh. you determine if you want to who you want to give this to. For me, when I think of BTS versus Twice, right? Twice is clearly might be a hot take for some people. Twice is the greatest girl group of all time. I think I think if not number 1, number number 1A to girls generation. That's honestly yes. at the top of yes. the mountain. It's them too. This year with Twice, I was expe- going in, I was expecting the rest year because we knew last year was the the work year, right? Mm. Even in their quote-unquote rest year, I think they released two of the candidates, strong candidates for song of the year with Fancy and Feel Special. That is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. And both of them were different concepts than we had previously seen with them. That is commendable yes. in itself. That a top tier group can not only have a a concept change but execute it so flawlessly. It's it's it is a reflection of the company and the and them as artists. So there is an argument to be made for them for artist of the year. But that being said, BTS's overall cultural impact in 2019 is undeniable. So therefore, I'm left with Twice, Itzy, and Mamamoo for Girl Group of the Year. I think Itzy had a fantastic debut year. I don't think they're at this level yet. In a couple years, they might be winning this group if if twice peaks for some reason. I think Mamamoo also had a very strong year, but when I line it up versus Itzy's year, I mean, when I line it up with Itzy's year, I think it's about equal. And when I line both of these groups up against twice, I got to give it to twice for girl group of the year. Let's, let's take a moment to talk about twice's concept change. Because mm-hmm. I think Amazing. today is a very appropriate time to talk about that every I, well not every but like i would argue like a majority of female artists that debut young in the industry go through a similar concept change at one point in their careers mm-hmm. when they debut they're bubbly they have a girly um something that only young female artists can do kind of concept carl was like that girl generation was like that hell pinkel was like that mm-hmm. sorry finkel was mm-hmm. like that you know mm-hmm. SES was like that you know, and then at a certain point, after maybe they've gone solo or you know, you know, a couple years into their careers, they do a concept change, and this that for me is really the challenge. It's the it's the test of prove. Uh, what's the word? It's the te- it's the big test for them mm-hmm. to prove your. You, you have know, staying like, power. Yes, yes. Um, I I don't I don't think up until this point. There's been an artist that has done it so su- so successfully, except maybe Lee Hori from like Finkel. Oh yes. Did she it? Was, she, what might say? Did it feel special, Warren? <laughs> <laughs> Bro. <laughs> they, they had a very fancy kind of change. Okay. One might say. <laughs> oh. But I mean, at, at the end of the day, it's personally it's been wonderful to see. It's been something I've been asking for for many years, and mm-hmm. they've kind of exceeded my expectation in every aspect in that aspect and at the same time they kind of did everything that a girl group should do in maximum even though like i mentioned earlier they kind of had a little couple low points here and there um shout out to mina shout out to jiho you know it was i think i kind of have to say the twice as girl group of the year wow anita that's your cue (laughs) that's your cue anita (laughs) <laughs> well, the thing is, 
to be honest, I definitely agree with everything you've guys said. But I do feel like Twice is a very good contender for Artist of the Year. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I don't know. I feel like BTS's just cultural impact is huge, mm-hmm. and I, I and I see the argument for wanting to give him give them Artist of the Year, yeah, which is why I find it hard to. I feel like. If if we could double up, of course I would give this to Twice. Yep. Because I feel like very well deserved. But I do feel like it. I would definitely put them up for Arts of the Year as well, if it was possible. Can I? I want to make one one take. I forgot to make when we were doing girl groups. If Eyes One had actually gotten Fiesta out, I think they would be the third group. Oh yeah. Just putting that out there. I think. Warren, so you're muted again. If we had, <laughs> if we mm. had, um, give me one second. If we had Violetta and Fiesta, even on that 10 second clip of the song, I'm going to say they would have been the third group. I'm just throwing that out there. I am biased. Look at the pin I'm wearing over here. It's an eyes one pin. <laughs> you but, um, one over here. <laughs> so, Anita, you essentially have to make a decision on if you think who your artist of the year is in order to give out this one. <sighs> Can we, yeah. like, how about we do this? Let's pause on this. Finish Artist of the Year first. And then okay. come back to Girl Group of the Year. Artist All of the right. Year, I would 100%. Every molecule of my body feels <laughs> like I have to give this to BTS. <laughs> and you know, as I am not the biggest BTS fan by any stretch of the imagination. You guys know this. I still feel 100% you have to give a it. They are so important to K-pop as a genre. Mm-hmm. They are the they are, as I said, they are carrying the banner for K-pop and forging a new path. They are mavericks in the industry. I mm-hmm. I don't know if they I don't know if we are at our peak in K-pop, but if this was our peak, it was a tremendous peak. And therefore, yeah. I feel you have to give it to BTS in 2019 because alone, just the world tour that they went on is legendary in itself. That's true. That they tour. could have released no music and just done that ridiculous world tour, and I still would give them this award. That's how strongly I feel about them. I kind of agree, hundred <laughs> percent. <laughs> but I'm gonna play the devil's advocate. Uh huh. Let's let's put it this way: BTS only had one comeback this year. I know. Boy with that's, love. That's that's the kicker. <laughs> let's look at Boy with Love. Boy I with think love. Boy with Love is the top four song of the year still. I don't. I'm. I would put it in the top ten song of the year. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure about top four personally. I do think it was a very appropriate song to put out in the in this point of their career where they're kind of big in in the beginning of a new kind of phase in their career. But I personally, it was definitely. It, it felt like a rest year for BTS, even though it was not a rest year. Even though what? it is not a rest year, I look at they your face a, they right had a now. Month. They had a month of rest. Yeah. Uh, but in terms of pure K-pop output, is this the best we've seen from them? No, but you give it to them for the intangibles this year. Yeah, I'm gonna play. I'm gonna stop playing the devil's advocate. I, I can't. I can't quit anymore. <laughs> Anita, are you okay with? Are you okay with us giving this to BTS? <laughs> yes, I mean, yes, you, you what was that? Spread the love more. <laughs> All right. So the artist of the year. I don't know why y'all depressed. It is. This is our highest award. We're gonna give this one out first. The largest amount of soju, an entire truck full of soju, goes to <laughs> BTS artist of the year. Congratulations yeah. on the most legendary exactly. year of K-pop I think ever. Which means that our girl group of the year oh, wow. goes twice. to Twice. The Soju goes to Twice. Congratulations Yay. to Twice. I think musically they had the strongest year out of anyone. But now let's move on to probably the toughest debate we're going to have. Oh, Song of the year. These right 15 candidates <gasps> took every ounce of strength I had to, to, to get it to this list over the last couple of weeks. We had help from the Soju Talk Discord. We even went over it with ourselves. I still second-guessed myself and changed it around a little. These are our 15 candidates for Song of the Year. Actong Musicians, How Can I Love the Heartbreak? You're the, old, you're the one I love. BTS's Boy With Love. Chunga's Gotta Go. 
Hwasa's Twit, Itsy Dala Dala, IU Blooming, Eyes One's Violetta, N Flying's Rooftop, NCT 127's Superhuman, NCT Dream's Boom, 17's Fear, Stray Kids Mirror, Twice as Fancy, Twice as Feel Special, and finally TXT's Runaway. For right. me, I think it comes down to four songs. Fancy, mm. Boy With Love, Gotta Go, Feel Special. I think those are the four top songs this year. I think they're all great. I think Gotta Go is fantastic. I think all of them are, I think, legendary songs this year. Last year, I think it really came down to two songs. Love Scenario and Do 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 Do. This year, mm. I think it comes down to four songs. You can argue if the last year was better or this year was better. It's up to you. I think the most legendary song out of the four songs this year is Twice as Fancy. I think it is... I'm not saying it is by far the best song of the year, but I think it is head and shoulders the best song this year. That is my argument. <laughs> it's head and shoulders the best... Is that a phrase people use? I've never heard that before. I'm saying... Okay, never mind. It's head and shoulder, <laughs> knees and toes, knees and toes, anybody? It is by... Or? It is not by a country mile, but it is by like a country block <laughs> the best song for me <laughs> here's what i'll say in continuation of what i said earlier regarding twice concept change fancy is truly proof that twice is going headstrong into a new concept change without losing anything mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if anything they're gaining stuff while doing this concept change which has which is kind of undocumented in in this industry for such a drastic concept change. And I've heard people say, I've heard people say that Fancy, if you just listen to the song alone without the music video, sounds just like the bubblegum pop they used to do a year ago. Mm -hmm. But I, here's it. But also at the same time, you kind of have to re recognize that personally for me with Fancy, they kind of released, no, they kind of like introduced new elements, new colors of a, of a spectrum that they we had not seen while incorporating things that we had always been familiar with in, in terms of twice, in terms of like song, song structure and like how the song mm -hmm. like produced and whatnot. And then they received help from different departments such as music video and choreo and 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 and, 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 and I my brain froze. <laughs> Co costumes and stuff like that in order to achieve this concept change and do i still think that this is the best concept change we've seen in the industry yes i might even argue that it's even crazier than the time liori did her concept change after finkel because liori had the freedom of going solo that's true mm. twice is doing it in the same circumstance they were in half a year before fancy happened so in that aspect in that aspect again i come back to this this has been the most successful concept change in the entire history this of is the third Korean time you mentioned <laughs> third time i truly believe so it's... and then let's look at the song itself right it's completely what we're used to in terms of twice music but at the same time, so they're reusing an equation, a formula that already works very well. At the same time, they're introducing new elements that we, that we have never heard of before. <laughs> let's just put it, music. Let's put it this way. Yeah. Cheong's like yellow. Well, how do I d describe that? Um, what what is that? What is that pattern called? I forgot what it's uh, called. Some shark tooth. Gingham. Gingham. Whatever it is. Yeah. That outfit on her with the short blonde hair. I don't know if you're lactose intolerant, but that was legendary. That that outfit. <laughs> Did you just make a black legendary? Oh my! Anita, I see Goodness. on your list you have BTS's yeah. "Boy with Love" and Chunga's "Gotta Go." I do. Why you, are you missing a song, buddy? Why do Can you? Can I present my argument? Yeah, I want to know your argument as to why you think they're better than Fancy. Okay, so it's not necessarily that they're better musically, because I feel like this year was really strong. Like a lot, all of the nominees, but for "Boy with Love" and "Gotta Go," I'm, and I'm leaning more towards "Gotta Go." Um, I just felt like it, the the cultural phenomenon that was "Gotta Go," because I feel like everybody was copying that song. Everyone references it everywhere. 
Yes, exactly. And I feel like even now, because I saw Chunga perform at the Mamas, like she still did that song, even though it's almost been a full year since this came out. Mm-hmm. And she had snapping after that, which was great too. But I still feel like that one song just it was everywhere. And this I is like it's her Gashina for sure. Yes. Yeah, I was about to say. Yes, yes, yes. And I don't know, I just feel like when I when I think of this year, I feel like that's that's the song that I saw everywhere. And of course, Twice Fancy was amazing. I feel like that's one of my favorite Twice songs. Mm-hmm. But I do feel like Gotta Go had just a little bit more of, of a cultural impact, which is what I, what I feel should be the song of the year, though. Like mm-hmm. the one that you feel like, even if you're not a K pop fan, like you know what the song is. I would argue the same for Fancy, though. Well, okay. Before we continue <laughs> with your, your second choice you got written down there, the Soja Talks so, Discord picked Fancy. And then slightly under them, they picked Gotta Go and Feel Special were tied. One vote less. Mm, yes. Oh, shout out to Feel Special, too. That's a legendary song, too. <laughs> but, Anita, I see you have Boy uh, boy With Love here. Before we, we give this award out and wrap up our award ceremony, why is Boy With Love above Fancy as well for you? Well, I also feel like the cultural impact of this song was really That's interesting true. as well. Just because it was... It was a collaboration with Halsey. It was like really big, both in in Korea and outside of Korea, because it was it was like the spotlight, like, right? Because it was like the first, I would say, like the comeback after BTS really blew up, you know? Yep. So I feel like it was really as well referenced a lot, and I don't, I don't know. I feel like even though they they did not. I feel like they did not promote it as much or like it's not as big as some of their other songs. Mm-hmm. I still feel like it was a song that was referenced a ton. Okay. Out of those two songs, cause fancy is winning on all fronts right now. Which right. song do you think stands up the best against Be- between my two picks? Yeah. Which one of those two songs do you think stands up best to fancy? Gotta go. <laughs> so, so it comes down to gotta go. Versus Fancy, which for the Discord was the top two songs. <sighs> what are these numbers you have written next to the titles? Those are relative numbers of the votes. Oh, so Fancy had six votes and mm. Gotta Go had five <laughs> votes. Mm. There's two people supporting Fancy and one person supporting Gotta Go. Might I also add, you know how on Spotify... Mm-hmm. Yeah. They they do this like 2019 wrapped and you know you get yeah, to see yeah, the yeah, top yeah. artists of your year and then top songs of the year. The only pers- the only K-pop song that made the list for me was Fancy. Even even though my even though they're not my ultimate like girl group, just putting that. <laughs> I think I've watched the Twice Fancy video more than any other thing I've watched this year. Even over Violetta, which I've watched. I've, a lot. I've seen Rocket Punch more than I saw Fancy. But well, yeah, I've yeah, seen, I've seen, I've seen, seen a lot too. Right? I, maybe I'm a bad Wiz one, but I've seen Fancy the most. You're for a bad sure. Wiz one. I'm Sorry. A Anita, are you are you willing to concede this? <laughs> yes, I feel like both songs are great. I just wanted to shout out Tonga because I feel like oh yeah, shout out that to song. Like she great. she is now. I'm gonna put this. Maybe it's a hot take. Tonga is the. Of the artists that are purely K-pop still, right? Female artists that are purely K-pop, I think she's the top female solo act right now. That's why we gave her the award. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yes. Sorry. But <laughs> the song of the year after much debate goes to Twice's Fancy. Congratulations, Yay, Twice. The congratulations. Soju for song of the year goes to you. As a quick rundown before we end our award show, Rookie of the Year male goes to TXT. Rookie of the Year female goes to Itzy. Best solo artist male goes to Taemin. Best solo artist female goes to Chunga. Underrated sleeper songs of the year. The shots go to Luan's Beep Beep. Very Very's Ring Ring Ring. Yukika's Neon. Boy Group Excellency is going to BTS NCT 127 Girl Group Excellency is going to Itzy Mamamoo twice. And our four big day songs. Well, no, four of them. Yep. Boy Group of the Year, 17. Girl Group of the Year, twice. Song of the Year, twice as fancy. And Artist of the Year is going to BTS. Oof. but this has been so do you talk your weekly shout at k-pop i might need a shout after this this was a stressful <laughs> show i'm doug i'd like to thank warren and anita for joining me 
we will be back next year, next week. Well, actually, next year with our review of 2019 and predictions for 2020. Yes. We will be back in two weeks with our regularly scheduled show. But we will see you then. Thanks for listening. We love you all. Bye. 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 Hey.